Life in a world that keeps changing Think that it's progress you're making Copy and paste pretty faces All the time Pictures so perfect we play Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. Thank for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much indeed. Except to say I'm not a lawyer again. <laughs> because it's important that distinction be made clear. You are not a lawyer again? I am retired. Can you retire? If you have been called to the bar, you've been called to the bar. Yeah, but I can choose to decide that I've called it day on the profession, the practice of the law itself. I've called it a day. Mm, Did they... that five years ago, and I'm done. That's Why? That. Why so? Multiple reasons, but the key one being the fact that I'd always desired to leave the practice of law after a point, but the fact that it has become increasingly possible to practice law in a lawless environment, it was very easy to say bye-bye. But that predated, let me be clear, it wasn't like Nigeria became like this overnight. It was like this since I was born. So I had already made it clear to myself that once I got to a point in my life, I was going to say goodbye to earning a living, saying my Lord and your worship to people I know are not in any way fitting or deserving to be called those names. I know that I'm a con I live in a country that is ruled essentially by impunity and not law. So whilst I could play that game of practicing law until a point in my life, I understood clearly that after 50, the life is essentially over, really. You can't keep living to earn a living after 50. So I told myself since I was in the university, and all my friends who are in university with me will tell you, I, saw, I told them back then, once I turned 50, I was leaving. So it's not just the fact that the judiciary or the legal system is, at best, a sham. That's not just the reason. I had a personal desire to leave by the time I turned 50, and it helped to say bye-bye. So in some way, you, you, you lost hope in the judicial process. In I Nigeria. never had any hope in the judiciary at any Why? point. So why time. do you bow then before the, the Temple of Justice? Uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it is one thing to read law to earn a living, to read law so that you also know what the law says, or to read law in the delusion that you might get justice out of a judicial system that is not designed to deliver justice. So I'm not suggesting that there aren't instances where you can extract justice out of the system. You would have episodic periods when justice will be delivered, either because the judex himself has a conscience or because you were fortunate to have all the evidence stacked in your favor and impossible for anyone to twist the outcome. But the reality is that the, judici the judiciary is hardly the last hope of the common man in our country, we must be bold enough to tell ourselves this truth. How yeah. bad are things? Horrible. Our judiciary is no different from our custom or our police or any other part of the Nigerian state. Why should we be surprised that the judiciary reflects us? It is us. We are the ones who are there. So it is either we are good enough as a people to do, to do justice to ourselves or we are not. So we should at least tell ourselves this own truth. The judiciary is not staffed by people from Ghana, Togo, Lume, or anywhere else. They are Nigerians like me and you, bowing to the same pressure, knowing the truths that me and you know, that we sometimes find difficult to express for several reasons. Not only fear. How so? Why did you think, do you think things get so bad? I mean, there are other clients where even the UK, in the US, you you make, uh, there are extrapolation about how bad things are within their judiciary also. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, why do you think things in Nigeria, uh, as well in the judiciary, are uh, differently 
horrible like you've described no, 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 no. I didn't say especially. See, our situation is this. In the absence of the rule of law, we have become a people governed essentially by the administration of impunity. The policeman who is supposed to enforce the law, in the absence of laws to enforce, has to enforce some form of order. And the order he enforces is based on the whim of the political masters he serves. So you find, in essence, that the policeman is administering impunity. So when he is done administering impunity, somebody has to pretend to uphold the law. And that is the judiciary. But the judiciary in question is peopled essentially by the likes of me and you and all the other Nigerians. The appointive process has already assured problems because it's coming through the same filter that filters the same segments of society from which you and I are drawn. So a lawyer coming out of this system is nominated by those who are given the powers of nomination for judicial offices, it's no wonder that you sometimes find that the list of appointed judges is reflective of who, are, who, are, who is who in the judiciary. So the judiciary has more or less become an hereditary position found on who you know, who your parents are, or your political affiliations. It's become a way to settle persons who are children of the system. So... You then begin to get the bookashualization of our judiciary. Is that an English word? Well, we have to introduce it into our word. If we have a situation where a, sen a senator, in his valedictory speech, is, say is telling us how decisions are made in our judiciary. But and the man's name the, happens to be Bukachua, so yeah, we might the, as well the, attribute the, it to the, him. The woman, uh, the, the Honorable uh, Justice Bukachua, had denied. She can deny said. anything she cares to deny as much as he cares to deny it. But when I'm sat in this country and I am seeing obscene, bizarre decisions of courts that have no bearing on common sense and it is normalized as coming from hallowed chambers and I'm supposed to find some level of explanation so that I might rationalize the insanity that has become normal in my space. So a man comes voluntarily and speaks what he said is not this we don't need to begin to interpret it it's not about 25 percent of this he spoke unambiguously man was clear let's speak about um the explanation of INEC vis-a-vis -vis also what the eu had said <laughs> um and i mean you watch the edition of the program uh, hmm. and the liberal party has been itching to react to that uh, conversation about what uh, Mr. Fessor Sokoye said. What are you, the reactions in the, within the Labour Party about this? I'll say this. Since uh, Mr. Okoye's vituperations on your show, I have not sat in any collective of the Labour Party, but I will speak as a Nigerian, of course, one who worked within the Labour Party conclave and who has had occasion, of course, to, have, to speak to one or two persons. I wasn't in any way, shape, or form surprised by Mr. Festus Okoye's vituperations in your chambers. Would you call it vituperations? They are vituperations. Yeah, because his they his own explanation? No, or? they are vituperations. Vituperations are essentially outflows that do not flow from common sense. And that is what the gentleman did in your chambers here. Let me be very clear. INEC is a public body established by law bound to work according to the law. It advertised its guidelines. It told the world what the guidelines were going to be. The taste of the pudding is in the eating. The reality is that for a long time, the electoral processes had been abandoned by Nigerians because they lack trust and confidence in the process. So the advertisement of beavers, the IRF and everything, they were quite vociferous in explaining to Nigerians and reassuring us of what would happen with the system. To now have Mr. Festus Okoye sit down here and open his mouth, there must be a disconnect between the mouth and the brain box for him to offer anything short of an apology, unreserved one to Nigerians, for the utter failure to pretended by Heineck. Let me say this. 
in a sane environment where people are still governed by reason, the likes of Mr. Festus Okoye should either have resigned or be somewhere writing his statements explaining to Nigerians what happened. Glitch. The question is that glitch. Is it a glitch in human brain, a glitch in the technical systems, or a glitch occasioned by the complete shutdown of human conscience? So when the person now comes here and he sits down and he begins to offer explanations that variance with common sense, as has been attested to by anybody who observed this election or was here in this country, all the evidences are very clear and it shows very clearly that everything that should work on that day worked except INEC. The integrity of INEC as an institution went on exile. So if a person who is now purporting to speak on behalf of such an organization is so lacking in shame that he will sit down here and he, even things that shouldn't issue forth, for, I'm, I'm no longer practicing and I'm restrained in speaking to the case that is before All the right. court. So, let, let, I mean, uh, I, I like us to stay away from the personality of no, Mr. It's not about person. So that we can it's just say about... No, let's say on the issue. And I'd like to take you on, on some of the things. He, he said to us that that is the explanation of the commission, that the commission within its capacity did its best. And let's look at it first and foremost. One of the things I never promised was the beavers. So the question is, do you think that the beavers worked? Everything worked except INEC. Okay, so when you say everything worked except, except INEC, yes. what exactly do you mean by okay. that? Okay, I wasn't just speaking to the election. I participated. I was at the polling unit as designated. The beavers machine worked as much as it was allowed to work by human machinations. Because at my own polling booth, the first said, oh, some alphabets were not working, so they couldn't accredit those on time. We later realized that it was designed to frustrate some people into leaving. But people were determined to vote, so they waited. Eventually, in my place, they allowed the beavers machine to accredit those they had earlier left out. Voting did not end in my polling unit until about 840 something in the evening and they did not finish counting until about 142 or 143 a.m. a.m. that's the following day yes was it is this isolated in your area I'm or not, was this what it was common around where where you, you had friends or or, let me, or what your party for example be, it would be unfair to everybody concerned including myself for me to speak to what is outside my direct knowledge and participation I am speaking to what I saw. How many of those incidents you might find all over the country will be left to observers to say or speak to? But on the day in question, everything worked in my own space until it came to where I upload. And then they could upload House of Reps, they could upload Senate, but the presidential election result was not amenable to upload. To your mind, what do you think went wrong? It is very clear what went wrong. I neck deliberately, and I say this without any equivocation and with all sense of responsibility, I neck deliberately sabotaged the electoral process because it was working to a predetermined, obnoxious, and nauseous conclusion. It's not about the system failing. It's about human beings electing on their own to sabotage a system. This is, if I so, switch off the TV screen behind you, it goes off. But it requires my intervention to go off. If you look at the 2015 election, I don't know if you participated, and you jump into 2019 and then 2023, if you look at those three last elections, uh, how would you describe the development and the progress of our electoral process? Let me put it this way. What INEC has done is that it has more or less placed our democracy. I wasn't always convinced as to the truthfulness of that exercise anyway, but what they have done essentially is to remove the place of the citizens, the place of the voters from the electoral process. It simply means that any two-bit person that is assigned to the office of the electoral, uh, the, uh, the chairman of INEC can do exactly what the resident commissioner in Adamawa did 
and unilaterally on his own, following the example of Yakubu, declare anybody he cares to declare and say, go to court. So if you're looking at the 2015 election, the 2019 election, all I can tell you is that the 2023 election is the bottom part of Nigerian electoral malfeasance. Everything that was ever wrong in elections came to the fore in 2023, essentially because Yakubu lost his sense of shame. So when you are personalizing it... Uh, it's not personalizing. It, I'm know, sorry, Shem, I need it, to clear this. Yeah, because you are mentioning I have to name, mention it. And it's just one person is in that head. He is the head. So what would you like him is to... is rotting. You think he is, he is, he is, he is uh, the to head. blame? What blame is an institutional blame? Okay. The blame is for the entire institution. I dealt with INEC in Lagos on behalf of the OB campaign. It was my brief to pick up the, electoral, the election material for the petition. I know the level of stonewalling, and I made sure to write officially at the time to let them know. I know the amount of stonewalling, deliberate stonewalling and delays that we encountered from the wreck in Lagos and everybody concerned with giving us electoral material that we had paid for. We had to bring copiers from outside, from rank Xerox, to come to INEC, to come and make photocopies. It was that bad. They stonewalled us every step of the way. So if I'm saying Yakubu, I'm only speaking about Yakubu as a type, not as a person. He is a type, but he is the one who sits at the head of the organization. So you, you think the 2023 outing of is the Ineco worst ever? So, but how then do you, you, you think the election was uh, rigged or was manipulated, or how would you describe it? Put it this way. If we're speaking to the participation of Nigerians, their involvement in the process, you cannot fault Nigerians. Across the political divides, we might have our differences, we, have, we, have, we had our arguments, but the beauty of democracy is that when you vote and somebody emerges in a clear and credible process, you applaud. And then you go away, you go prepare for the next election, expecting and hoping that you'll be able to persuade the people by showing how bad the policies of the people who have won might have been, so that they will vote for you the next time. But in a situation where you see the level of brigandage that were evidenced, especially on March 18, not just the 25th now, the level of violence, intimidation, complete takeover of the city space mm -hmm. by criminal elements, they are abetted by these agents were, of state. This is outside of the, uh, the, 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 the roles of INEC, isn't it? Let me put it this way. If INEC as an institution is examined and then you look outside, you, look, you don't look beyond INEC, you first of all be having a distorted picture, is a system. INEC is only a part of that system. The judiciary is a part of that system. The police is a part of that system. It's a systemic failure. But we are dealing specifically with INEC. And that's why you may, and as you are pointed out, say, okay, what, what about INEC? Mm. Point is, INEC it was the principal failure mm. on the day. Every so, other one was tangential. You know, Mr. Farouk, you yes, look sir. at it. Your party, the Labour Party, has presently about 34 seats in the House of Reps. If you say the process is flawed, how did you achieve that? I'll tell you. If you recall when I was explaining what happened on the day. I said when it came to uploading the House of Reps, it worked okay, right? When it came to uploading the House of uh, the, the Senate. Senate, it worked all right. But the presidential election upload was deliberately sabotaged. That was, those were my words. Mm. So that does not in any way, shape or form, contradict the position. So you look at it again and say, uh, I rev is what you see as a major problem. Promise made by INEC? No, 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 no. See, uh, what, I, what, 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 in what sense? Because the upload of result is about the IREV, no. which INEC itself, they said they had a glitch. The glitch is what <laughs> was difficult to explain right here. Look, Whether it was, it was human glitch or a mechanical glitch, it was a difficult one to explain. So the Americans have this funny thing they say. They say, if a word is like a dog, if it quacks like a duck, it's most likely a, a duck. duck. 
You tell me you have a technical glitch. I'm, I'm something of a Luddite. I can practically, I can hardly find my way around my phone. But I do know that if I have a glitch of any sort, there are digital footprints that any techie person would be able to, to analyze mm -hmm. and tell to the world exactly what the case might have been. So the question I'd like to ask you is that if uploading is what really worried it's the not process, uploading that worries me. So mm -hmm. I, I'm asking, uh, from the evidence that you have, because there are copies of the result at every polling unit, Yeah. What are you learning about what you have on your hands what? manually aside what is supposed to be technically uploaded or transmitted? What we know as a fact is that Yakubu cannot rationally explain to anybody in the world how he arrived at the result that he announced. Because what we have is at variance with what they are even busy uploading in most cases. Even though they have not even finished uploading up until today. And yet, a winner was declared by INEC. So you think the original result and what we have is far yeah, apart? No, no, no. The, 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 the integrity of that election has been undermined and compromised beyond, beyond, almost beyond repair by INEC because what it is uploading on its portal, what individuals took away as from EC8A, the agents, they are, they are not consistent. All right. So... I would like us to anchor on this point. When you hear Mr. Peter Obi say, I'm not asking uh, that he's more bothered about the process. Yeah. Uh, is it that he's lost hope in winning at the tribunal? Or what exactly no, does no, this no, no. mean? I think there is or a what is a mean? What is a way forward from this point? Thank you. There is a misunderstanding when Mr. Obi says that, and I would explain. When he says that he's focused on the process, what he's explaining is that the process itself, if it is flawed, fundamentally flawed, open to manipulation, not transparent, what it has produced cannot be said to be good. So let's deal with that process, look at how it has affected the outcome. If the process is deemed to be bad, the product is obviously not going to be acceptable. It is our belief that if the judiciary is indeed the last hope of the common man, if it is not to capitulate and ensure the death of this democracy, then it must look at the process that has produced the incongruent situation that we have found ourselves in today, and then tell us, is this normal? Is this as it should be? Is this the precedent right. we want to set? for elections in our country. That is up to the judiciary. We're hoping and believing that we have a better country. And I, I, know, to that. And I know that you, you believe in this country. Albeit you may be an angry Nigerian, no, but, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. but we do hope for a better Nigeria. I believe in Nigeria, and that is why I can't leave this country. But I believe in something that does not exist and has to be battered. It is up to the judiciary to help us midwife a Nigeria that we can all be proud of. So I believe in Nigeria, mm. but not in this one that is killing all of us and mm. strangulating us. Dele Faruti, a retired lawyer. Thank you. <laughs> this is the first time I will ever call anybody that by that title. If there is anything like that that exists in this world. A retired lawyer, that's why he calls himself and are one of the spokespersons of uh, the Labour Party in the presidential election of John Zimothy. Thanks so much indeed. Always.
ladies and gentlemen, good day, my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted Lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about, I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, good day my brothers and sisters, my mommies and my daddies over there. Is your sister again, your doctor, your friend, your girl, admitted Lady TV? Please, if today is your first time of coming across my YouTube channel, please do subscribe for me. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video, you will be notified. So in this my channel, I will be bringing up many things to you in which you will benefit from it. I do talk show, I do news, anything you want to talk about. I am into it. Please subscribe, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So each time I upload any video or each time I'm on live on YouTube, you will be notified. Thank you very much for always being there for me. Please do subscribe for me and as you do so, God will richly bless you and meet your heart desire. Thank you very much. I love you all.